Hi, I'm Ron Moorhead, and you're listening to the Paranormal Zone. Look, I know the supernatural is something that isn't supposed to happen. It does happen. A ghostly apparition in the dark of night. Human sacrifice, dogs and cats living together, that's hysteria! Mike, uh, important question of the evening. Would you float on the surface of the ocean if you had a chance? And I'm not talking like, you know, 20 feet out or 30 feet out or even 50 feet out, you know, or 100 feet out or 5,000 feet out. Well, maybe 5,000 feet out. Oh, my God. I'm talking in the smack dab middle of the ocean. Whichever ocean you prefer, would you take a dive and just sit there and float for, hmm, let's say, half hour? Uh, float on what? Like a like an inner tube? Or Yourself? A, would you a kayak? Would you? <laughs> would you? Okay, <laughs> let me rephrase that. Would you? Okay. Swim? Would you tread water? Tread water. Dog paddle in a circle. Would you do that if you had the opportunity? Even if you were surrounded by, <sighs> let's say you were on an ocean going vessel, and it was for okay. whatever reason it shut down. It was you know taking a maintenance break or what have you, and. It's passengers, it's crew were allowed to take a dive into the ocean if he or she chose to do so. Would you be among those who dove into the ocean and, and just sat there and did your thing? Uh, <laughs> absolutely freaking not. Okay, no, all right. No. Okay. No. I Okay, I have been in the South China Sea, and I, I, I floated there, and I, I you know snorkeled a bit. Beautiful. Loved it. But did I go past maybe 40 feet from the beach? No. <laughs> and would I? No. He says <laughs> nay, a big old fat nay to that one for, for Mike. And I agree with you. That, yeah. uh, it's the, ridiculous. The idea of that or the image, the, the, the thought of that just creeps the hell out of me. <laughs> um, and you, you know what would happen to me? I'd be treading water. I hope you wouldn't sink. Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> had to think but about I would it be treading second. water, and all I would picture in my mind is the movie poster of Jaws, and and that's what would happen to me. Now, it's funny you brought that up because you know that they do have across the country on occasion, you know, on occasion, but usually around the 4th of July. They have like gatherings, get-togethers, parties, so to speak. Almost like the old drive-in theater vibes, yet the drive-in theater is floating out on a raft. Well, not the theater itself, but, you know, right. like the screen is out on a raft in the middle of a lake, and all the viewers are floating on inner tubes with their feet dangling in the deep, dark, Dank waters. I'm, well, I don't know if they're dank. I've seen that. I've seen that before. Now, would you be willing to do that? Let's say go out about, let's say then, about 30, 40 feet, treading water or floating on an inner tube, watching Jaws at night. In a, in a, in, in the a, lake. No, I wouldn't even do it in a freaking lake. Oh, okay. You, hey, you know better than I do even what can be in those lakes of Minnesota. I will not have my foot shredded by a muskalung <laughs> <laughs> will not now, or a great northern pike oh man yeah those things have nasty ass teeth baby you know, oh my razor, goodness gracious razor sharp it would be like taking a a mouthful of razor blades and just you know in, engulfing your foot in it or something i know can you can you just say for our listeners and for me can you just say pointy pointy teeth <laughs> It, it, little pointy teeth. <laughs> okay, thank you. I yeah. appreciate that. Run away! <laughs> now, those are, 
yeah, like you said, the pike, the you know, the northern pike, the muscalunge. Yeah. I always say muscalunge. You say muscalunge. Yeah, I, you know, I uh, have no idea. Oh my gosh, it's or, probably lunge because they, you know, it's well, it's more, got that e at the end of it, so that's why I've always pronounced it like that. But you sure. could be right. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, we have good sized walleyes up here too, and the walleyes oh, have yeah. nasty, and they ass have teeth. sharp teeth. Cry me Christmas. Bass, largemouth. Bass. Those things are known to take a nip or two if you get in their yeah, way. Yeah, but they don't really have teeth, though. They're, they're, well, they're, they got, they the, got little, little, little tiny, 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 pointy, tiny, teeth. tiny little pointy teeth. But what I'm saying is that they're they're nasty. They can be. Uh, yeah. But anyways, well, I, I think, heard stories of somebody sitting on a dock with their feet in the water and getting them shredded. No, oh, I 100 percent believe you because and i don't use the word shredded loosely that shreds your uh-huh. everything muskies <clears throat> can get up to what 50 inches oh, 60 geez. inches i mean yeah 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 they're monsters I, I, and they're i don't know what the record is but yeah yeah so i think i agree with you i would not float in the middle of a lake while watching jaws um my mind uh, would as, go haywire for one thing um and as i've gotten older in my 61 years on this planet of ours uh, it's your it, planet. It, it's already been it's already been years that I decided that I I won't even I'm not even going to swim in a lake period anymore. Oh, I don't I don't even walk in them. If I walk in them, I can only go so far because as soon as the water touches that vulnerable area, <laughs> even just a little bit, I'm done. <laughs> that cold, it just you know. It's gone. It shrinks. It pulls back in and it's gone. Well, I wasn't and going I, to ask you what vulnerable part you were referring to, oh. but I think you made it pretty clear. I thought you were going oh, to say, man. like, I thought you were going to start complaining about, you know, leeches getting stuck between your toes and other fun stuff like that. I don't <laughs> like those, but uh, I, I don't like the cold worse. I mean, it's no. my balls I'm talking about. Okay. okay. Thank you okay. for clarifying. Thank you for clarifying. Right. Uh, you know, as long as we're going on and on about nothing, uh, really pertaining to the episode. Well, I guess so. Yeah, we're it talking does about pertain. We're yeah, talking about monsters of the deep for gosh sakes. This is going to be a fun conversation for sure. I mean, we're we're not necessarily focusing on anything paranormal or mysterious, but definitely strange. I think it falls into the strange category. Some of these bizarre, absolutely bizarre literal monsters of the deep. We're talking both real life and perhaps not so real life, yes. but how Very to cryptid say? type sea going. Oh man, monsters as well. Anomalies, yes. yes. But before we move on to that, I have to ask you one more important question as a former Minnesotan, and you are a no deck. Um, mm-hmm. But is. as a former Minnesotan, you are familiar that this is the land of 10,000 lakes, far more than 10,000 lakes. Far more, yes. Are you familiar? And did you, did you ever have swimmer's itch, Mike? No, uh, um, it, probably because I was older enough to know that I don't go in okay. lakes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't swim in lakes. And it's been years, <laughs> many. And, oh. and if there's a sign posted, caution, swimmers itch. Yes, exactly. You know, I no. <laughs> that, so that is a, that is a, the, the creatures of the not so deep. No, but they are gross in many, uh, many ways themselves. Uh, yes. Yeah, it's without grossing out our listeners who may not be familiar. Um, you don't want swimmer's itch. I got it on my, like, I think it was my ninth birthday. We went swimming. It was my yeah. birthday party. Went swimming at the lake and, well, guess what? Got those lovely bumpy rashes and got those little itsy bitsy microscopic creatures living under your yeah. skin and itched I've like. Heard, uh, I've heard they can be bad. Oh, God. It was just like, no. <laughs> But uh, it's funny as as a Minnesotan, you know, you know, swimmers itch sounds common. I remember being at a hotel in a town not too far from here, and obvi- obviously it was a tourist because he was coming up to the front desk. I was in the lobby for some reason. Maybe I was staying there, and the guy walks up to the front desk. You were getting a donut. I was probably getting a donut. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though I don't really eat donuts, right? But, uh, I know you don't. Maybe I was. Maybe it was. Who knows? Um. But this gentleman walks up to the <laughs> walks up to the front desk and he asks her, "So this lake doesn't have that Minnesota lake disease, does it?" And it's, oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's 
It's like, yeah, you're not from around here, are you, buddy? Well, as long as you wrap it, it'll be fine, and you won't get anything, any kind of a disease. Yeah, I mean, it's it's no fun, though. Whatever. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But it's a real thing, and, it is. and bad, yeah. And you know what else is a real thing, believe it or not, is the Paranomaly Zone podcast, your weekly dose of all things. Hey, you guessed it, Paranormal Strange and Mysterious, as I said before. We're focusing a little bit more on the strange aspect tonight. but my name, Weekly and freaky. Absolutely. Uh, my name is anyway. Patrick Goffenberg, and I am joined, as always, by my co-host with the ghosts, the paranormal poster boy himself, the formerly profusely bleeding from his appendages... <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mike Carbono, a couple episodes ago, I, I uh, burst out and, 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 and gushed blood from my nostrils in the middle yes. of the episode. And now before recording, Mike suffered a near fatal nick on the tip of his finger. Are you OK? Well, yeah, actually, it was a few days ago and I I, uh, I don't I don't do so well with knives anymore. Oh, no. <laughs> and I put one hell of a cut on my index finger on my left hand. Which I should have went and got stitches. I mean, but you know, oh, I was that raised bad. to. It's that oh, bad. Oh yeah, huh? absolutely. I was raised to uh, by my father to. Oh, you pinch that together and put a bandaid on it real tight. You'll be fine. Now go play. Hell yeah, you know, <laughs> yes. that kind of thing. Yep. So I did that, and it didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> you know, yeah. and I had to have a bandaid off it sometimes so I could kind of dry up and heal. But uh, it's healing into a extremely large, wide opening. <laughs> it's a <laughs> crevasse it, in Mike's body. Yeah, and it, uh, you know, it. I don't know what I bumped it on, but it started bleeding really bad. And well, I'll tell you what, you bumped I, it on. You bumped it on your giant salt ball thing, whatever the hell that is. Your salt <laughs> lamp that looks salt like a lamp. <laughs> looks like a looks like a you know calcified ball of some sort. I'm not sure, but no. it was sitting on. Your lovely, lovely, um, how would I describe that? Well, it's that skeleton. It's kind of an ornamental skeleton that's sitting behind you. Yeah, it's your... about three feet long, two and a half feet long, and yeah. it's skeletal. We, we've we mentioned this a few times on the podcast, and Mike mentioned before we started recording, we should ask our listeners to submit names for said skeleton. Um, yeah, because it's always going to be on here. Yeah. Mike, you need to do me a favor. I'm going to remind yes. you. You need okay. to take a nice picture of your skeleton. Yes. And you need to post it on on the twit um, or the X, whatever the hell it's called. I will never sure. call it X. Um, right. Post it on the twat and see if our listeners feel, you know, maybe they will feel obligated or they're so bored and have nothing else to do. They will suggest names for that lovely yeah. skeleton behind you right now. And the winner gets um, something. Yeah, something. <laughs> You know, we have both got so much crap around our <laughs> podcast desk. I mean, not crap, because, I mean, you have extremely valuable Star Wars stuff, and I have just multitudes of collectible Funkos and figures and It's a menagerie. Everything. It's a menagerie of that's Mike's a, passions. Yes. Absolutely. So. You know, that's a, that's a way that um, AI is going to potentially be able to recreate our like essence a hundred years down the road after we're both long gone is that AI intelligence will be used. Well, AI intelligence that's redundant. You know what I mean? Yeah. It will be used to, as I said, recreate the essence of you and I and whomever they choose mm -hmm. by doing like kind of online searches of what you've purchased online searches of what you've looked at online searches of any number of things, and it'll basically be able to recreate you. Hell, we have how many damn podcast episodes out there right now where they can absolutely copy our voices, copy oh, our sure. images, recreate us totally. A thousand years from now, maybe that's a little too long. A hundred years from now, you and I are long gone, but yet the essence, our, our avatars, our podcast avatars, there can you still go. be yeah. thriving. That's kind of terrifying. But, uh, you know, I thought about that the other day that, you know, I, when I'm gone, there will at least be, uh, ourselves will be in the ether somewhere. Yeah, I know. That's, it's a crazy thought. Um, yeah. What the hell? I, want, I wonder if, I wonder what, what the, I wonder what the rule book is when it comes to 
Like if you and there I, is no rules. If you and I die in a in a car crash on the way to the the Sally House on our second adventure, what happens to the podcast? <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, obviously there will be no more episodes, but will like our podcast provider somehow figure that out and then delete everything, or will it be out there forever? Um, uh, I hope it's out there forever. I yeah, I guess I don't know. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, we shall travel in time to the future and see. We shall. Well, Mike, let's get down to to business yes. here. Monsters of the Deep. I love this topic. Um, it's fun stuff. We've, I know we've dove into this. No pun intended. Um, back in the day, as the Alter L podcast, I know as Paranormal Zone, we've talked about like you know sea serpents and mermaids, and you know focused on s- specific like legendary, perhaps real life underwater sea creatures sea beasts right exactly like i said this one's kind of focusing on legit real life creatures monsters beasts we're going to talk about some legends going to talk about the possibilities of them being legit we're also going to throw out some you know maybe some deep thoughts some hypotheticals yeah we shall see where this conversation goes like every episode we have no idea (laughs) now this this um this may be hard to believe, but this topic, even though it seemed like it popped into my brain this just today as I texted the idea to you, I was yes. uh, influenced a few days ago. The idea, you know, was kind of sparked up in this gigantic noggin of mine about monsters of the deep. I saw a clip from a, I believe it was on the Smithsonian Institute channel. Oh, I have I have that in my favorites on my. Yeah, key. I mean it's it, it shows some pretty great stuff, including a lot of really cool nature stuff, obviously. Oh yeah. And the the clip in uh, that I want to focus on here, it was very brief, but it made me go, "Holy crap!" That's a great point. Long story short, it was um, they were professional divers. Uh, professional scientists, obviously, as opposed to those unprofessional scientists. Ah, Cousteau? Um, you know, I'm not sure. I, I don't remember their names. It Was, was a fair... there one with a red uh, stocking cap No, on. that was not Jacques Cousteau. Okay. Um, I know a who... very large nose. I it. know who Jacques Cousteau was. <laughs> yeah. um, so, uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you very much for uh, clarifying that. <clears throat> Long story short, too late. It was an expedition of some sort. They were tagging a 10-foot great white shark at one point. They were going to track this, this shark, you know, which is yeah. a very common practice. The shark was tagged, successfully let go, swam away, you know, and they were able to follow it for over a year. And it was seemingly <clears throat> just doing fine on its own. When inexplicably, one day, when it was... I believe a hundred feet offshore, and this was a one of those offshore businesses where it like was an unbelievably steep drop, deep drop, 100, 200 feet out where it just went wham straight down to a thousand feet, whatever it is. Jeez. Yeah. But they're tracking this shark. It's alive because they're recording this body temperature. Okay. Mm-hmm. They're obviously following its moments, you know, or its moments, its movements. Um, <laughs> they're also following its special the moments of its movements, <laughs> following <clears throat> its special private moments that it yeah. has <laughs> down below the surface, turning their head when it urinates. Oh yes, I mean there it was, you know, a, privacy. It was, it was a little bit, a little invasion of privacy. I'll tell you that right now. But following this living creature, all of a sudden, I don't know, we're inexplicably. At a high rate of speed, this tagged shark just drops. I mean, it plummets. I mean, just at this, you know, again, here's that word. That's my word for tonight. Inexplicable speed. The, it wasn't, it didn't dive. The, no, that's, it, that's it kind was, of. The, it was pulled under by something extremely large. That's kind of what I'm getting at is that yeah. the, the body temperature recordings, and I'll spare you the details here. The gist of it is the body temp recordings related to the ultra fast sinkage <laughs> plummeting 
could only be rationalized as such. This nine foot mm. shark was inside the belly of another beast that plummeted that quickly, that fast. What would you speculate in your mind that that could have been that was so huge <sighs> that, you know, nine foot shark is still a very big shark. It is. It's a, it, um, it was a baby, it, great white. I'm, I mean, that's a right, baby exactly. size. Exactly. They get a lot bigger, but um, but that still is a very formidable shark. That, right. You know, in the ocean. Now, the first I, the first thing that I think of is possibly a sperm whale. How's that sound? Sperm whales are known to attack on very large prey. Sperm well, whales they, dive to the deepest depths of the ocean damn near. Right. I mean, not that far, but you know what I'm getting at. Right. Well, the sperm whale, the uh, the main diet, the preferred diet of a sperm whale is the giant squid. Right. I mean, the sperm whale will have scars. They've, they found them with scars and, you know, from battling these things. And, exactly. <laughs> and eating them. Uh-huh. Nope, that's anyway. yeah, that's one hundred percent true. One hundred percent true. But the only thing that made makes me scratch my head was they they were able to find the tag. The tag was found washed up on shore. I remember okay. that part of the clip. But the scientists were just baffled and befuddled, so to speak, about the speed that this thing plummeted at. I mean, yes, whales can die, but even at, I mean, sperm whales can dive to these unbelievable depths. Mm -hmm. But at that speed and at the, you know, the idea of this thing being swallowed whole, I mean, yeah, sperm whales are ginormous. They can get up, you know, 50, 60 feet. Yeah. Blue whales actually a hundred feet. Yeah. I mean, they're large, they're biggies. Yeah. Right. So that's kind of what sparked my, my, my idea for this episode because the, right. the, fun, well, awesome. the fun thought is like, my God, like Mike, like you said, what the hell grabbed that thing? What the hell pulled it down? Um, well, whatever it was, was monstrous. Well, let's speculate a little deeper here. No yes. pun intended. <laughs> right. Deeper. But anyway, <laughs> you know, what if it was, okay. So, you know, when we talked about the giant squid, uh, I think the, what I read was, uh, the largest on record was like 40 some feet, but they speculate that they can get to be like a hundred feet long. Now, something that has tentacles that huge. And they would be that powerful mm -hmm. from very deep and far away from this shark. It could, it could grab it and just pull its tentacles in and suck it right down to where it needs to be, you know, and then taking that beak and chewing it, tearing it up. Oh. Possibility. Oh, absolutely another possible. one, another one, another one. That's terrifying, by the way. A, I mean, a squid. megalodon came up from that deep and <laughs> swallowed it whole and, and just dove back down. <sighs> The, meg, the Megalodon do back down. <laughs> yeah. Did I say it that way? I don't know. <laughs> like that all the way. That <laughs> oh, man. Wouldn't that be something if a Megalodon still existed? Wouldn't well, that be something? And why couldn't it? it well, it no, I get you. I get you. Why couldn't it? The ocean, I mean, it's be, we've said it so much, it's become a cliche almost. The ocean, we know right. less about the ocean. I'm not talking about you and I, Mike. I'm talking right. about the smartest people in the world who spend their lives focusing on this and studying this, we know more about the surface of the moon than we do about our own oceans. Exactly. Uh, it's terrifying. Down well, there. there's not a whole <laughs> lot to know about the moon. It's dust. But I thought it was a ball of cheese. Dust and rocks. Oh. Uh, I don't know. I, th I thought it was fake. I mean, everything about the moon is just an illusion, oh, yeah. right? It, it's, it's, a, it's a government conspiracy. Okay. <clears throat> how anyway. The, how the hell did the... <laughs> how the hell did the idea of it being a giant ball of cheese ever be thrown out there anyways so how well, that it's happen? yellow and it's got the holes in it oh that's true okay <laughs> well it looks like holes in it if you look at it anyway <laughs> it looks yellow well i guess on some nights it does look yellow yeah, yeah. anyways or or uh the color of a of a nice mozzarella or a mozzarella slowly molding yeah one, one of the two sure anyway sure okay how you doing, listeners? You still with us? <laughs> <laughs> we do love all you guys, by the way. Believe it or not, we do get new Absolutely. listeners. Absolutely. We do get new listeners from time to time, so we appreciate all you guys. Um, I hope you stick around uh, for the long run. 
But it makes you think, though, Mike, what the hell is down there? Oh, Just yeah. what is down there? And who's to say what it, what are known as, what are labeled as, what are def- what creatures have been defined as prehistoric creatures mm-hmm. or extinct creatures? Well, the idea of them being extinct isn't too clear cut sometimes anymore. Oh, um, absolutely. Let's think about some real life monsters that we have known to exist based on fossil records, okay? What can be down in Davy Jones' locker? Wow, that was impressive. Before we started recording, Mike did his impersonation of E.T. from, oh my God, I got the chills. It freaked me out. I thought I was looking at the damn thing itself. I was waiting for Mike's neck to just extend four feet. Uh, and the, you know, when E.T. gets scared and runs away... <laughs> And I, don't ask me to don't do it. Don't do it man. again. Don't do it again, okay? <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll have you do it on the next Patreon episode. How's that? There you, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, maybe you can do the entire episode in E.T.'s voice. Oh, maybe. no. <laughs> How long would that episode last for you? Yeah, 30 <laughs> seconds, if that. Yeah. 30 seconds. So Patrick um, was afraid when he saw. He, I it, was. It scared him. He, he was a young child, and he had a nightmare about it. I did. I did. I was, hey, it happens, okay? Absolutely. I saw the movie as a young, young, wee little lad, and it creeped the hell out of me, especially the scene where he was sick and he was like turning all white and stuff. And I just, (laughs) stop it. Don't do that ever again. Anyway, yeah. Warn me. Hey, when I was a young kid, I I had a a nightmare about uh, a Twilight Zone episode. So it happens, you know. I know it does. I know it does. But don't ever do that again. Maybe I'll have okay. to get you do get you to do that, and I'll put it on the soundboard so I can. There like, you go. I can do it out of nowhere and see <laughs> if it shocks you. You know. <laughs> yeah, fun times. Where the hell was I? Oh yeah. Um, so prehistoric, yes. based on fossil records, monsters that we known to have existed. And we're talking about you know deep sea creatures. Um, we, obviously, we got you know we got the plesiosaurs. We've got the. The, uh, the, forgive me here, we got the pliosaurs, we've got the mosasaurs, we've got the ichthyosaurs, I mean, we... <laughs> Cephalopods. I mean, yeah, uh, ginormous, larger than life, beyond capacity of knowledge in your tiny little brain to imagine gigantic crustaceans the size of Volkswagen beetles. <laughs> you know, you know uh, that was just going through my head before you said that. Oh, sincerely? I'm not kidding you. A <laughs> Volkswagen Beetle. Yep. Oh, there you go. I must have picked that up, what you're going to say. That's interesting. Go ahead. That's, well, I was going to say a little bit of synchronicity there, but not really. That's just kind of kind of a little bizarre working on the same, wa- uh, same wavelength there, I guess. But uh, yes. Mike, you know, obviously mentioned the, uh, you know, the Megalodon, ginormous prehistory relative of the modern day Carcaridon Carcarius, great whites, um, except about well, three times larger well in, in the megalodon teeth that are found yeah very common actually finding you know in oh, places sure. where you wouldn't wouldn't mm-hmm. think there would be any sharks or fish or water at all well you know, yeah exactly well you go you can walk the coastlines you know find yep. some beach and just go and check them out chance yep. you know not saying you'll luck out but it's been known to happen it's like whoa what the hell is that six inch right. long sharp thing yeah um yeah, it's pretty. I actually have the tip of of a prehistoric fossilized shark tooth back there. I can't. Well, I, I'm not You've doing anybody favors. Before, yeah. <laughs> it's back there, and people are listening, going, "Uh, thanks, dipshit." Yeah, Patrick is pointing behind him somewhere. I am pointing <laughs> with my pointy teeth. <laughs> pointy teeth? Is that even possible? I'm looking at my professional notes. Um, some of these prehistoric Sea monsters, Mike, are truly terrifying. Um, oh, absolutely. Are, are you familiar with the like Pleurodon, for God's sakes? I know it's totally exaggerated and then featured in like the Jurassic World movies. Um, I'm saying exaggerated as far as like its size goes. I mean, it's still right. monstrous, but it's not nearly as large as, as they have uh, portrayed it in like the uh, the Chris Pratt Jurassic World the movies. But just like imagine. Like the body, the body of a of a seal with the the flippers of a 
of a whale, the head of an alligator, you know, and yeah. put that into like 60 feet long of 50 tons of terrifying bulk. And that's life flirt on for you. Then you have these gigantic bony fishes, lead sick these, Mike. Yes, I remember. I, I remember this crap. I love nerdy dinosaur prehistoric monsters stuff. Leads. You and I sh have shared that since yeah. childhood. Yes. Yeah. It's this thing is is the uh, largest bony fish ever, I believe. Theorize maybe reach lengths of up to 85 feet, perhaps 90 feet. Just gigantic. What's it called? Lead Sixties. It's n named after the uh, um, the explorer who found or discovered it, I should say. Um, and it's a fish-like creature? Bony fish, baby. Bony wow. fish. I bet you can get a hell of a fish and chips off of that. <laughs> I'd put some vinegar on that and eat it. Anyway, go ahead. <clears throat> so Great big long, piece of <laughs> long story short, uh, point, you know, point, pointless point attempting to be made. Monsters have existed, okay? Yes. Are all of There's them truly no doubt about that. Are all of them truly extinct? Uh, it's so hard to say. People believe in something called Nessie, Mike, that still exactly. may reside yeah. in, in some loch over loch. in Scotland. Um, God, I'd love for that to be real. That was probably the Loch Ness Monster, Mike, was probably the cryptid that got me in to my fascination of cryptids. Sure. You know, quickly overtaken by Bigfoot. I mean, I was oh, yeah. blown away by the phenomenon of this supposed creature. But my gosh, everyone is familiar with Loch Ness. And the fact that no one has either 100% proven it to be non-existent or 100% proven it to be exist, you know, to be an actual being adds to its... Uh, Allure, doesn't it, Mike? Right. Well, and because of that, you know, we, as much as we want it to be real, and we believe that it could possibly be real, mm -hmm. um, do we really want it to be found out exactly just in case if it's not real? That's a great question. And, th and then we lose everything for the last hundreds, how many hundreds of years? That's a great you know? question. I know it's, it's kind of sad to think of that possibility. <laughs> Yeah, but I thought that thought popped in my brain the other night, Mike. I was thinking, you know, what should we do for some some cool Patreon episodes? And I, I was like, maybe Mike and I should have a sincere discussion. Whereas the title of the topic is simply, "What if we're wrong?" And by that, I mean, what if nothing that we've talked about for the last however many years on this podcast, nothing, none of it is real. There's no such thing as ghosts. Bigfoot yeah. is a as a hoax. No such thing as, uh, like I said, the aforementioned Loch Ness. I I want to sit down and have a heart to heart with you, and put ourselves in that mindset for a Patreon yeah. Patreon yeah. episode discussion of like, what the hell would we do if all this was proven <laughs> to be a bunch of hooey? We would be talking about basket weaving right now. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Why basket weaving? Oh my I, god! It just first thing that popped into my head. Something other than cryptid monsters, yeah. paranormal. Is that? Are you down for that though? For a good, not to, I am not tonight. I am. Uh, next week or uh, sometime next week, we'll do our we'll record our next Patreon episode. We have three new ones that we've recorded in the last three weeks. If anyone is interested, in, uh, a load of other cool stuff on the Patreon Paranomaly Zone page. Uh, we'd love to see you guys. You can, I am actually going to write in my book next page is what if. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Oh, that, I cut you off there. No, so that's right. no, no, that's that's great. <laughs> that's that's great. I was about ready to go into my um, I read, uh, uh, necessary evil that I hate doing, but I'll keep it super short. Yeah, if you guys enjoy the podcast, if you've been a long time listener and you're wondering, hey, I wonder what the hell the Patreon content is all about. Well, no better way to to find out than to check us out for one month at the low cost of one buck. I mean, obviously, you can sign up for three bucks or you can sign up for five bucks. You know, actually, that's wrong. I eliminated a three dollar one. It's either one or five. <laughs> well, but you have access to all of the exclusive episodes for one dollar, including um, some fun stuff on there, some audio, some video, some stuff from our own personal paranormal investigations, our blogs, our whole archive of. Alternate Route Podcast episodes, Nonsense to Cast Radio episodes, for God's sakes. I mean, we're going back a long ways. You want? You think we sound dumb now? Go listen to those old episodes. Yeah. 
So you eliminated the the middle. Price yeah, because it was it was. It's it's either it's either a dollar or it's either the least or the most. There's no well, in between choice. Is that fair? Well, it's it it was too convoluted. I thought I wanted okay. it to be simple. I mean, I okay. I don't want people to say, well, I want to. I want this, but I don't want that. But yet, that's offered there. But I, but I don't want to pay that. I don't want to do this. You know, so I just want to make it simple. I want to say, well, it wouldn't it make it more simple for the listener to go, oh, well, three dollars isn't that much more than a dollar, but five dollars, forget it. That's very true. That's very, very true. <laughs> you know, I don't know. You know what? Though, <clears throat> did, wait, wait a minute. Okay. Bef- oh shit! I'm sorry, listeners. Didn't I didn't I do that already before we put the Patreon podcast on temporary hiatus? Didn't I remove the five dollar one and I lowered it to three? I, I thought I did no that. Idea. Now hmm. thanks for bringing that up because now I'm confused. <laughs> oh well we'll check it later. I, I actually I think Mike is right. I think it's one buck or three bucks. I think that's exactly what it was, because I think I removed the five dollar tier before, like I said, we went on hiatus. Yeah, because well, because you realize that we're not worth five dollars. I think that's exactly it. <laughs> so I think that's exactly it. Yeah. Well, if you guys want to check out a bunch of cool content, though, we'd love to see you there. As little as one buck. There you go. And we are worth five dollars. I was just kidding <laughs> about no, that. No, Dang we're it. no, we're not. No, we're not. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> now um, that brings up another uh, brief story, Mike. Um, there is a, a a portion of a book of mine that I just. I've finished it, uh, goddamn, going on probably about 10 times now. And I'm in the middle of it yet again. It's another Titanic book. Yes, okay? Get over it. I have a ton of them, and I love them all. But the author of this book, his name is Charles Pellegrino. And he was um, lucky enough to be involved in James Cameron's 2005 expeditions down to the Titanic, 2004-2005, out on the gigantic uh, ocean-going research vessel, the Keldish, which um, also included a Russian team of scientists. Get down to the nitty-gritty on Charles' first descent down to the Titanic the night before. I mean, he was starting to, he was excited, but naturally he was becoming a little apprehensive. I mean, he's like, I'm going to go down two and a half miles to the bottom of the ocean and look at the, at the Titanic. What if I die? Right? I mean... <laughs> well, would you would you take that dive personally? I mean, if you had the, the oh, chance... Oh, man. I mean, I, I couldn't do it. <sighs> I would For one thing, to. I couldn't hold my pee because I know they don't <laughs> got a bathroom down there. Well, no, you, you have little tubes you pee in. They got them right there. Oof, you you turn around well. and you, know, you have your little... You know, turn around in the corner and go piddle piddle, and then you're you're good to go. Well, you better not eat Mexican before. Well, I was going to say, yeah, you can go piddle piddle. I don't know if you can go pooey pooey. I'm not well, sure. Well, and I'm not I'm not saying anything bad about Mexican food or the culture because Mexican food is my favorite food. Mexican food, oh, Mary and I love it, and the more authentic, <laughs> the better. I mean, anyway, go ahead. Okay, Charles Pellegrino. <laughs> um, he's apprehensive about this, and one of the Russian scientists just kind of casually they're talking about what may be down there we're talking about life you know and obviously every time they go down they're just you know scooping taking one scoop of sediment from the bottom of the ocean usually reveals 100 new forms of bacteria for you know microscopic right. life that has ha- hasn't been known to man before anyways fascinating <clears throat> it is <clears throat> the one Russian gentleman just kind of casually was talking to Pellegrino and he says, he goes, yeah, no, I know there's huge creatures down there. And he, and Charles is like, okay, what do you, what do you mean? And, he, and he's like, well, for example, several occasions when we are up descending towards whatever wreck we are looking at or whatever expedition we are on, when we are in sight of the ocean floor, you know, and all of our, you know, everything has been, our propellers, our propulsion has been shut down and we are slowly just making our way down. With, with a uh, heavy lighted. With everything well lit on the, fo- well lit, the, yep. the very edge of the light that they can see, not caused by their submersible whatsoever. Gigantic clouds of dust, of sediment, sediment sand yeah. not dust sediment right. sand 
everything just churned up just as if a large creature of some sort decided to just dart out of view of this mystery mm. vessel that's slowly, you know, coming into their neck of the woods, so to speak, right? Again, I, 100%. I haven't thought of what that could have been. Well, what is it? Well, there is uh, a giant um, stingray, deep sea stingray. Oh, and man. if that was like under, you know, how stingrays will kind of bury themselves under the the sediment and oh sure, you know, kind of you wait for uh, um for prey or whatever. And you know, what if that was disturbed and it it yeah. just you know, I, I well, I like have, you said though, Mike, it could be anything. What if I mean, it could be a, a unknown uh, a species of of shark. Um, oh, absolutely, it, it could. I mean. Deep sea sharks that we know to exist, those gigantic Greenland sharks, those six gilled right. sharks, those things can get up to 20, 25 feet long. Mm-hmm. I mean, and they are ocean bottom dwellers for the most part of, of their life. You know, they feed on, they literally, we literally have footage, not me, not you, footage of these massive sharks on the bottom of the oceans feeding on the carcasses of whales that have floated mm-hmm. down to the bottom. You know, right. they're down there. These things are 20 feet long. That's what we know of. What do we not know is down there? I mean, it's it's terrifying. It's fascinating. Ooh, I don't know if I want. You know, to know, you know there's you know, like you said, they they only see as far as their light, right? You know? Exactly. And what is just beyond that light, and staying just beyond that light, you know, it moves <laughs> right. away as right. the craft is coming closer. Oh, that creeped me out a little bit. Yeah, you know. It, it's you, your mind can go nuts thinking about what possibilities uh-huh. there could be. And that's half the reason why it's so, it, you have to be strong minded to do stuff like that, Mike, because like you said, I don't know if I could, I don't know if you would be able to just, you're trapped in the submersible yes. at the mercy of the elements at the mercy of, of technology. You know, but let's, let's be honest here. But you're like, what is around us right now? What's looking at us? What's sitting there going, what's that tiny little thing that's floating just out of eyesight of me right now? I could swallow that thing right now. Um, <laughs> Actually, uh, a very large toady fields. Who the hell is that again? Please oh, clarify. Come on. Come on well, she it. was actually a very funny comedian okay. in the 60s, maybe yeah, 70s as well. I love how Mikey's so disappointed with, with, in me. With, with one leg. She only had one leg, but she was funny as hell. Well, I apologize anyway, to her and her family for not recognizing to, uh, who that yeah. was. <laughs> but to, to, you know, to em- envision a gigantic one-legged toady fields just beyond <laughs> the light of your submersible. Well, how about this? How about a huge, beastly, bulgy Randy Quaid? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Uh, I mean, Shelly Winters swimming by. Hey, why not? <laughs> why not? Got out of the got out of the Poseidon and is swimming past the submersible. Okay, we're getting a, we're getting a little silly here, Mike. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'll save that for a Patreon. Say, Mike, it's been um, it's been a while since we've taken a, a seamless time traveling excursion, but let's uh, regroup, let's regather our thoughts, and let's dive into a little more of some real life monsters that we know yes, of that are it. terrifying in their own right. We have it. We have it. And then uh, some creepy-ass potential legends that may... Well, no, not potential legends. Legends that potentially may be true. Hold on, boys and girls. We shall be right back. And we are back after yet another successful time-traveling excursion. We told you it would be seamless. I mean, no one needs to reveal the truth that this is actually a month and a half after we started recording this episode. Yeah. And It took you that long to go to the bathroom? Yeah, I've been drinking a lot today. <laughs> drinking a lot of fluids. Yeah, uh, staying, that Coors Light. Staying hydrated. Well, no, it's 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 all the water throughout the day. It's the water, and then the yeah, towards the end of the night, maybe I want to relax and have a Coors Light. What problem do you have with that? I have no problem. Yeah, sure. Then why'd you bring it up? <laughs> Just small talk. <laughs> <laughs> like Mike, your voice, your voice cracked a little bit. There's small talk. Yeah. 
Jibber chabber. I have here in my professional notes. Bang, yes. Just a very tiny, tiny little list. Uh, Mike, you and I need to go back and forth here with some of these legit, real-life, creepy-ass, deep-sea monsters, okay? I mean, some of these things earn their name. You, you see their scientific name, it's like, oh, yeah, okay, I get it. I, I, I don't know what that means for the most part, but the, the moniker, the common name that they go by is like, okay, yeah, I see it. I see why it, it goes by that name. I can see why you call that shark the goblin shark. You know, I can see why you call that why why you call that deep sea dweller on the ocean bottom the angler fish. Angler fish terrify me. Yeah. Uh, oh, horribly disgustingly uh alien. Alien. Well, they look alien and they have that flipping appendage that looks yep. like bait. Just dangling out in yep. front of their ginormous, <laughs> ex- gaping maws, you know, or whatever the hell you want to call them. Full of teeth, big, oh. sharp, pointy teeth. Pointy, pointy teeth. And 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 what that is actually is bait, isn't it? I mean, it's like fish come around and they. Oh, absolutely. That's what I was saying. Yeah, and then, they, and then it's like and yeah, it's a lure basically. Yeah, and now is that the fish that can actually swallow things that are like? eight times bigger than themselves. Like, you know, uh, it's it? it's funny that you brought that up because one of <laughs> one of the creepy ass creatures, and yes, a lot of these deep sea ones, they're not like, you know, they're not giants by any means. A lot of these right. are, are small little creatures, but you know exactly. their faces, their bodies, you know, what makes up their bodies are just so like you said, Mike, alien like and monstrous. And I mean, monstrous. Yeah. Um like the angler fish, I don't think gets very big at Not all. Not very big, you know, maybe a foot, foot and a half, <laughs> right. two feet. Mm-hmm. Um, but like I said, it's funny that you brought that up because one of the creatures I wrote down <laughs> is affectionately referred to as the black swallower, believe it yeah. or not. But yeah. this creature, try to envision, if you're kind of familiar with what your basic minnow looks like, it kind of looks like a little minnow with one slight exception. It looks like it has a basketball attached to its belly because <laughs> this flipping fish can actually engorge, digest other life forms until it expands to almost 10 to 20 times right. its own size. And I said eight times, but yeah, boo, that's, that's, I mean, that's flabbergasting. I, yeah. <laughs> How does something evolve? How do you evolve that survival mechanism where it's like, nope, this thing isn't, I'm not, I'm not wide enough. I'm not bursting at the seams enough. <laughs> you know, I need it's, to it's keep how, stuffing myself until I'm 10 times my size. Yeah. It, it's how they have had to adapt over their existence, you know, you know, however long these fish have oh, I existed, know. you know, they, they adapt, and that's what they got to do. You know, and all of these survival methods, Mike, and we're not going to get deep in the weeds here on this stuff, but they're all so unique in a lot of ways. You would think that it would be more likely that different species evolve the same survival method, you know? Um, like, if it works for yeah. one, why wouldn't the others adapt that way as well? well exactly. That's they're all so unique. Yeah. They're all so different. Mm-hmm. Like a squid will sit there and squirt out ink. You know, yeah. What other creatures have developed that, you know, capacity, that capability? I mean, it's everything is so unique and different and specific. It's just, I don't know, makes you go, hmm. Smarter listeners out there, let us know why is everything so unique. Well, and it's interesting about the squid and the octopi and all that stuff that, uh, (laughs) you know, they can immediately change their color. Yeah. Yeah. And their and their shape and their size and uh, like octopus, they can make themselves the shape of something different. Oh, God. you know, like a different fish or something, or they go against a rock or whatever, and it, and they disappear because they everything that is on that rock they change their you know outward appearance to look exactly like that. You know what is fascinating it's to me? Amazing is the ability to mimic. Mimicry, exactly, as a yeah. survival technique, is something that is just mind blowing. That me. has to be a thought process. That can't be just. That's what I'm saying. Actually done. Yeah. Right. I mean, but talk about not getting too deep in the weeds here. But you go as far. Do- I'm doing air quotes as far down the food chain or the chain of 
intellectual ability, and you're, you're going down to insects who, who are able to mimic, you know, larger, right. quote unquote, smarter life forms that you know are trying to feed on them, and it's just they somehow know to appear as if they aren't tasty little food items. You know, it's right. like no, I'm actually this piece of wood. You know, yeah, because you're right. not going to eat that piece of wood. Or I have changed myself into this much more impressive uh, predatory right. fish that, uh, yeah. Right. No, it's, oh, it's fascinating. <laughs> Absolutely fascinating. Um, I want to talk about a little bit, it's, it's, it's a recognized name now. I want to talk about this for a little bit. Now, the year I was born, Mike, way back in 1976, talk about a large That was creature. a good year. Great great year for music, I thought. The oh, summer of 76. Classic, classic music. Uh, the, the bicentennial for the, for the United States. I remember watching that on TV. It was pretty awesome. Oh, I, I can believe it. I can believe it, man. Um, where was I going with this? Oh, 1976. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, a very, very large creature, Mike. Uh, before this year, totally unknown to man, really caught in a fishing net, you know, go figure, you know, shockingly, 16, 17 foot long, massive shark, which affectionately became known as Mega Mouth. I'm sure you recognize the term. Oh, yeah. Mega Mouth, Mike. Absolutely. Extremely rare shark, rarely seen still to this day rarely seen but this is something mike we're going back only to 1976 this massive beast of a shark we had no idea it it existed and there it is alive and well just happens to be caught in a fisherman's net you know whatever not just one fisherman (laughs) is out there catches this massive thing you know what i'm saying just from a a boat but that's just one tiny little example of Mike. Um, yeah, and who knows? Uh, Grandpa Mega Mouth might be still down there somewhere. <laughs> you know, Mega Mouth <laughs> Senior. Yes. Oh yeah, monstrously huge. Yeah, this isn't a small shark. Uh, that that uh, shark in in particular was, like I said, sixteen feet. So it, it's estimated to per- potentially reach lengths of twenty, maybe even longer. 20 feet, maybe even longer. So that's like, right. my goodness gracious. I mean, that's just one tiny little example. And uh, there's a reason that it's called Mega Mouth. Yeah, its mouth is quite mega. Yeah. <laughs> Not M-A-G-A. I'm talking M-E-G-A as in mega huge, mega big, and mega mouth. Um, yeah, it's when fully like extended, its mouth, I'd say, what five feet wide when it's gulping in its, yeah. its tiny little food because this thing doesn't have teeth. We're talking about bass earlier, Mike, with its tiny, tiny multitude of little, little teeth. They just suck their food in, don't they? Basically, the same thing as a mega mouth. I mean, it doesn't right. have like the classic shark tooth, you know, it's just kind of loaded with a bunch of basically useless, useless teeth. Um, mm-hmm. similar to like a basking shark, you know, it's. It's just, it's amazing to me that this huge creature, we had no idea. What else is out there? That's one tiny, tiny little example, Mike. It is. I mean, there might be, a, there might be a floating carbno out there. Maybe? I don't know. Are you related to any sort of sea beast, Mike? Oh, well, well I, I am a sea beast. <laughs> you, are, you are actually the bloop, you know? <laughs> <laughs> the bloop. <laughs> Yeah, I, I no, actually, I'm Don Knotts, and it's turned into a fish. Oh, there you go. <laughs> and I'm helping the Navy. <laughs> what was that movie called? What was his character? The Incredible Mr. Limpet. There you go. God darn it. I can a never classic remember that. that I love very much. But because looking into uh, uh, some audio clips, potential audio clips for this episode, you know, I came across stuff that we've shared before way back in the day as the Ultimate Podcast, but it's more about like mysterious sounds recorded in the ocean and still have no idea where the hell these sounds emanated from. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. One of them is the infamous bloop where, Mm -hmm. (laughs) I mean, these noises just resonate for miles and miles and miles and miles, ultra powerful. And it literally sounded like, (laughs) I mean, much deeper resonance, much lower. Yeah. More than you can go with that. Yes, exactly. But Mike, I'm (laughs) saying you're to blame. You are the bloop. 
I was like, oh, holy wow. cow. Did you that's see a that? Second, that's a second one I've seen. That tonight. was, whoa. Yeah, that was no bug. That was not a, that was interesting. It, like it came from behind me and on an angle up. That went straight that up one? and, yes, it went up, but then it went straight down. We're talking, I'm and sorry, boys fast, and girls. Fast, 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 fast. That was an interesting light anomaly. I saw one earlier. I didn't mention it, but when you were messing with your, your skeleton, something mm -hmm. that totally jetted forth towards like your webcam. Well, then there's three of them because I saw another one that went down, like where the skeleton is, like down right in the middle of that. Now, like, you don't think you know. that was a... I'm sorry, boys and girls. We're talking about these weird orb-like things yeah. that appeared on Mike's webcam here. Let's talk about that for a second. Any possible, any possibility that could have been a floating dog hair really close to the webcam? Well, the way it, that one was moving didn't look like a damn floating dog no, hair. It was bright and it was so fast. That and it the went, one that we just saw. It went straight up and then it went like, then it shot downward. Uh, no, okay. So, how is that going to change direction if, if it's a. Uh, you know, there's no airflow in here. There's no fan on. There are definitely no bugs flying around here. And, I know and, that for a fact. Oh, that's interesting. And yeah, it, so three of them tonight. And it looked like it had kind of, okay, don't take this in a sick way, boys and girls. It looked like it had a glowing tip, if that makes sense. <laughs> you know, kind of like had like the entrails, not entrails. <laughs> God damn it. A glowing tip with entrails. Entrails Gross. spilling out all over the place. <laughs> okay, anyways, that was interesting, but that was... But yeah, that's very cool. Keep an eye out. I don't know. Yes. We were talking uh, during our time traveling excursion that uh, Mike found... Uh, well, you explain what you were looking into and what well, you found, Mike. Uh, I have the abstract to my house, and I was it, go, it goes all the way back to 1882, and I was looking at every single person family or whatever that's lived in this house since 1882 and from what i can tell uh three of them have passed away while living in the house and two of them i know were in the 1800s that a uh, very good chance they would have passed away in the house at that time right you know, so like you said there was no hospital there in enderlin at that no, at that time no. as, as far as you know right right and well and there's I don't know if there's ever been a hospital here. Yeah, you would think that if they're not not in tiny little Enderlin, probably back in 1882. I would no. I would guess not. 1882, all, all the way up till when? Yeah. All, well, through the 1800s, there was very little here besides this house because it wasn't a, a town until 1890 or yeah, 1891. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, interesting. Looking at some of these other creepy ass, I mean, known to science creatures, Mike. Some of them have such great names, like I said, like the blob fish. Have you seen pictures of the I blob have. fish? It, it it looks like a like a human face on a on a. Oh my god, it's creepy! Like a half filled water balloon. It, yeah, <laughs> a dilapidated, yeah. like filled with you know Vaseline mixed with ketchup or something i don't know right. what the hell it is but doesn't it have like a like a blobby nose it does that's too? yes it like yeah just floppy. and the eyes in front like a freaking face it looks like that cartoon ziggy that cart that comic strip kind of there you <laughs> go great great yeah comparison yeah what's was it just known as ziggy i think that's what his what I that cartoon so, yeah. strip was known it kind of looked like him with like a with the tail and right. really pinky gooey flesh yeah. Yeah, the blob fish. You put Ugh. a mustache on it and a top hat and you got something. Oh my god, grab. hell no. Yes. You better take that on the <laughs> out on the road, baby. <laughs> yeah, I actually have that written down. Literally looks like a blob with a nose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I've I've seen that before, yeah. There are so many fish out there, not necessarily deep sea fish, Mike, and I'm drawing a blank right now and I apologize, but one of them it's it is utterly terrifying to see because its face looks eerily human and it's mm -hmm. it's large and it's it has like a very okay forgive me for the word bulbous i guess forehead it's shaped like mm -hmm. it has its two eyeballs right underneath it and it has like its its mouth and 
it's attached to a body of a fish, and it's like, good God, all freaking mighty, what are you? I don't like mm. it. I wish I would have uh, written the name of that down. I'm going to find out what that is, Mike. Um, and why? Why would why would they exist for that reason? I mean, with that look. Well, and I mean, I've what seen purpose would it be? The one that I saw that creeped me out was because it was, <clears throat> it was just like a, um, it was a guy like kind of snorkeling. He was hanging out maybe 20 feet of water and stuff. And this fish was just curious and it was swimming right next to him. got up to his face and was just kind of looking at him like, Hey, what's up? <laughs> you, know? I, you would hear me scream for miles from <laughs> underneath the water. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just typing in creepy fish. I'm using my phone here right now with human face. <laughs> um, I, 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 again, I apologize Oh, of course, I get all these freaking images of other creepy fish, the ones that I'm not looking for. But this was a big one. Oh, of course, there's the there's the blob fish, good old blob fish. Well, I'm not going to waste everyone's time. Oh, there it is, right there. I hate this thing. It's creepy. Yeah, it says crazy looking fish turns into a viral video. The Asian sheep's head, Ra- Asian sheep's head. That's what it's called. I'm going to write that down so I can look it up. Oh, I hate it. I hate looking at this thing. Well, we have sheep heads in our rivers. These things, this thing looks like it's about four, five, six feet long. I'd say probably 50 pounds or so. Oof, the Asian Asian sheep's head. Sheep's Sheep's. head. Oh, Oh, it's got an S on there. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. It does. Yeah, he's hanging out oh, with yeah. the scuba diver. Anyways, blah. crazy. <laughs> yeah, we're on a roll tonight. Aren't we? We're talking about orbs. We're looking up pictures, and the listeners are going, "What are you guys doing? We can't see this stuff." Yeah, I know. We apologize, Mike. Are you familiar with the Mola Mola? Uh, no, I'm not. I would like it if you would enlighten me. Well, I don't really. I don't think of this as being a monstrous fish, like a creepy, scary fish, but it's it's huge, and it's just another example of a of a bizarre huge, huge, it's huge. It's a bizarre um, example of evolution, I guess. But it's the ocean sunfish, the giant ocean sunfish. Yes, amazing, amazing, and gigantic, enormous. I have seen. A video of people swimming or scuba diving next to these things and they are dwarfed oh god yeah yeah but they are totally different from any sunfish that we think of in our <laughs> lakes and things it's yep. just they're not an the amazing main, looking fish they're not the, the little tiny pan fish from minnesota no. lakes it's you know. shaped shaped odd very odd yeah it doesn't really seem to have like a tail it has like a dorsal fin and it has like a, a lower I don't know abdomen fin or <laughs> yeah, it's what it looks like. Yeah, um, and then and then it's like at the back of those fins, there's really nothing. Nothing, yeah. right? If I, I'm I'm going from memory. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. and you're right. And it's I'd say it's probably about ten feet at max, ten feet square almost. It's like yeah, totally <laughs> round with a massive head again. Well, it almost looks like a floating head with a couple of fins. Boy, I'd like to roll some of that in some panko and put it in the frying pan, <laughs> no. I tell you. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I think you mentioned the lead 60s, 85-foot bony fish earlier today, too. Yeah, I can't remember what cheesy joke that you cracked on that one. But yeah, Oh, well. something about fish and chips. That's what you said. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, there's any number of creepy-ass sharks, too, Mike. I mean, we mentioned oh. the, me- the Megalodon. Who the hell knows if that thing is still ex- in existence or not? Chances are it isn't, but I'm not ruling out the possibility. Um, the only reason that we kind of maybe perhaps rule it out is just because of the temperatures of the ocean. They just don't kind of, they're not copacetic with what the temps were when these creatures did exist you know not necessarily known as deep sea dwelling creatures either they're more kind of in the kind of like more similar to the modern day great whites they hang out in the warmer waters that's theorized that's what they did who the hell knows um but i'm not saying that they aren't out there mike i'm not saying there isn't a massive 50 foot great white out there that's like hello hello, i'm a megalodon (laughs) you thought i was gone didn't you there's I, a, I, I, I really truly believe that 
By yeah, the way, there's another they, orbit that flew right to you again. Really? So, yeah. Oh, cool. Sorry, sorry. Go ahead. No. no yeah. I I have a a short list of actual oh, yes, real please. giant giants. I mean, they're no one, you know, they're giant compared to what you would think of. I mean, uh like the first one that I have, it's a uh, um well, the big red jellyfish. I you know, I didn't look that up, so just use your imagination. Those things can get pretty darn massive cuz I think yeah. I know what you're talking about. First and foremost, they're a jellyfish, and guess right. what? They're red. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and they're big, and they're they're massive, and they got long tentacles that swing down and catch little fish. Well, what is um? Some of those jellyfish are terrifying, though. When you think about, it. is it the man of war jellyfish? Oh yeah, do they? Well, I mean, the that, poisonous, they're venomous for God's sake. Yeah, bad, bad. And if you get stung by them, you're supposed to have somebody pee on it. <laughs> Right. That's, it, that's true. It neutralizes it. It does. Absolutely. I mean, I know yeah. you have more than just the, the big, giant, bulbous uh, jellyfish, unless you just oh, like yeah. well, saying that. There is actually the giant isopod. Ah. Um, and it's weird because it looks like a it looks like a lobster tail. Yeah. I mean, seriously, it's segmented. It's got the tail. And uh -huh. I'd like to dip that in some butter. I got an eating thing going on. Uh, Mike's got a lot of food references to every one Oof. of these examples. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Except the blobfish. Mike wants nothing to do with the blobfish. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, an isopod, that's, you know, the species that it is. But they get to be 20 inches long. But if you, you know, you know, think of those, you know, those little beetles that you see that you find they're. Oh, well, they're everywhere. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, dang it. Like the little, the common black beetles with with just like the head and the shell kind of, is that what you're talking about? Or, uh, or no. does one have like a, like the, what's it called? The thorax? Like no, the, no. What are you referring no. to? I don't know. Mike's distracted <laughs> by the train and his dogs. I know. Uh, <laughs> well, there are giant sea spiders. I mean. Uh, oh, they, yes. Those are creepy. Freaky. Oh, my God. Um, they're terrifying. The giant sea spider, the, the regular one, uh. It can have like a 20 inch long span of their claws, which is huge, huge uh, for that. But anyway, there is a Japanese spider crab, and that, believe it or not, gets up to 12 feet across. Oh, my God. No, thank you. No. No, thank you. Oof, the feet. And again, what, oh, what is yeah. the evolutionary reason for that to reach that size? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, there's exactly. got to be, I mean, there's like, obviously a legit reason but i i couldn't think of it right now but uh survival it has to be just survival and defense mechanism it's like i'm bigger than you you're not going to yeah. attack me and that could be all you know all it is is just a survival yep um the giant oar fish that now that's a mm. odd looking fish i it's love very, oar fish oar fish are very fascinating flat in the face and i'm gonna shoot my dogs here well oar fish mike those that. things oar fish can get ginormous um, right. Uh, the largest that they had found was 36 feet long. Yes. And that's just the one that's been, like you said, found and perhaps verified. Right. I mean, yeah. it's, it's like the basis of the le of how many sea serpent legends from back, oh, sure. back in the day when people are braving the oceans for the first time. This thing, not only does it shimmer, I mean, it's beautiful, very, but very, it has very. like a red mane what looks like a red mane of fur floating you know from its head all the way down its spine it looks mm. just wondrous and it's like is that thing real yeah it's real it, it's it the, is real it's the oarfish and earlier i did mention the deep water stingray they can get to be uh 16 feet in length but that's including the tail which would add quite mm, a bit but sure but uh well mike even the and staying in the ray family we know about the manta rays for god's sakes Those oh absolutely <laughs> the well, then, like, ginormous, yeah. 20 feet I or think, so right and then in like where was it in it's somewhere in asia where they they caught the largest like river uh stingray and oh yeah I don't yeah know what this i don't know what the sizes were of that or anything but um but huge uh there is actually also a seven arm octopus a seven-armed yep. octopus. I've never heard of this. That before. goes against its name. It does. Um, <laughs> the largest found of that is actually eleven feet long. A seven-arm octopus. 
Yeah, eleven feet long. At you know, at seven eleven with the legs. Yeah, uh, the giant Pacific octopus is the last one I have. Now this amazes me. I did not. I did not know this existed, and what this thing could do is amazing. Giant Pacific octopus. The record size is thirty feet across. And weighing more than 600 pounds. Good Lord. That's for a flipping octopus, 30 feet? Yeah, the giant Pacific octopus. Goodness gracious. Now, it says 30 feet across. Now, is that, that has to be side from, to side? So is that from like tip of a tentacle to the tip of the other tentacle? or? You well, know? that would be length. If you go across, that would be from side to side, wouldn't it? Gosh, I guess I don't know how they're how we're supposed to interpret that. Well, this shows how good of research we do for hey, this show. Hey, well, can't come now, 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 I'm no, no, disappointed no. in myself. No, 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 no. You're always Mister Mister Positivity. Now that yes. was a that was a that yes. had to have been a dog hair that just floated past you. That had to have been. You're getting like how I didn't see that, but how fast did it move? I that mean, one moved. It, it moved pretty fast because yeah. I've seen I've seen uh, dog hair floating right. going by. Well. Great Pyrenees and a German Shepherd, especially the Pyrenees, you're going to get a lot of fur. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. So it's very slow. It's not a fast-moving thing. But These what what I'm fast. saying, though, Mike, the one that I saw, and I think you saw it too, I know I kind of joked about it having a glowing tip, but it really it did not look like it was hair because it was totally straight and it was mm-hmm. going upward and it had the, the very tip of it was bright. Right. And it had like a like a tail. Yes. Like a... Like a like a uh, asteroid type. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. That's trail, what when yeah. I when I mistakenly said entrails, <laughs> I was, trying, yeah, I was yeah. trying to think of the, the proper word, and I still can't think of the damn proper word. But I don't know if something's yeah. going on, Mike. I think interesting. I think I think maybe perhaps the spirits are maybe getting revved up a little bit. They're looking forward to that spirit box session. They're like, well, uh, yeah. yeah, all the research I did on the house here. Um, could be interesting. You know, Mike, stirring up some stuff. Mike, we just that's the next Patreon episode. Not only are you going to do the uh ET impersonation. Yeah. I'll you, work on it, make it really good. Um <laughs> let's do a video spirit box session at your house. Yes. I'm talking yes. about well, I mean, I'm not saying we're not waiting until I make my trek down there to do oh. our next investigation at your house. I'm talking about okay. the next time we sit down and record episodes. We're going to record the screen here, and we're going to record the spirit box. Well, weren't we supposed to be doing a lot more video re- yeah. uh, episodes anyway? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, Well, we're also going to be doing that for um, not only Patreon, but for our YouTube page. Right. Um, I need to do that. But I've been so self-conscious, Mike. I'm like, are we really visual? Are you and I visual? Do people want to see you and I? I've been way too hard on myself. Because well, it, YouTube I think it's is more interesting. YouTube is obviously a visual medium, and more right. and more of social media is focusing heavily on video. I mean, mm-hmm. and, and I get it; everyone loves it. I wish we had more to just throw out there. I wish, I mean, we have more, but again, I'm too flippin' self conscious about most of it. I'm like, nah. Oh, there it goes again. There's another one. I saw that one too. So I don't know, listeners. Do you want us to be? Do you want to see more of us on YouTube? Let us know. We yeah, are going I, to we're, we are going to post up. I uh, I know it gets old because I've said that a thousand times, and I apologize. I do post stuff from time to time. I'll put it that way. I want to post more. I have a lot more video. We have more video. We need just, to do I, some video. I just don't know if it's worthy to put on there. Episodes. I just don't know if it's worthy to put up on YouTube. Is what I'm saying. Why not? I mean, people will have. The choice if they want to see us or they just want to listen to us. Yeah, I get it. You know, we have we have interesting little spots here. And, <laughs> you know, they they might want to see our uh, gesticulations and our Ooh. facial expressions and all of that stuff. Well, we do have some stuff available, obviously. Yes. Well, we need to make more. We need to. Anyway. I, and I agree. I 100% I agree. Yes. Where the hell were we? Oh, oh, I did already talk about that black swallower. Good God. Um, are you familiar, Mike, with this? It's, uh, again, we seem to always 
find those words, that one word or two that we repeat over and over and over again. But this is obviously another adapta- adaptation of evolution. But the barrel eye fish, Mike, is creepy. Barrel eye fish. Barrel eye fish fascinates I me have and never it's heard of creepy, that. creepy as hell because it looks like its head is invisible. <laughs> Or it looks like you can see through it because you basically oh, they, can. Sure, um, there are ghost fish. I mean, you can buy right. ghost fish for your tanks. Oh, you know. This thing is this to me. This one creeps me out though because it's a decent sized fish. Its body is totally solid, you know, and you can't see it. And I will admit that it's kind okay. of an illusion. Okay, it's an illusion because it looks like its skull is totally transparent because you see inside its skull its two gigantic eyeballs. I mean, you you see the body, you see the fins. I've seen that before. And then you see the invisible or transparent skull with the eyeballs inside of it. Yeah. It's the reason I say it's kind of an illusion is because it's not its skull. It's right. not transparent. Well, I mean, that part is transparent, but transparent. But its eyes have actually developed, have, it has evolved, produced, a transparent protective shield that has formed over its eyeballs. It's not part of its skull. Its eyeballs are kind of protruding, but it's involved basically kind of like a windshield. <laughs> um, mm. Not a windshield. Is there a, a wiper involved? I was just going to say, it's not. <laughs> you think underwater would need turbocharged wipers, right? Um, Does it, it squirt fluid <laughs> onto itself to be wiped? You know, that's something we need to dive deeper into, no pun intended. But yeah, it's it's just crazy to look at this thing with this gigantic eyeballs just looking out of this little transparent shield. It's like, and, uh, didn't Rodney Dangerfield look like that? Kind of. <laughs> His forehead was transparent? Okay. Well, I don't know. I'm bulging eyeballs. I don't know. Oh, okay, I got I got the bulging yeah. eyeballs. Every time you say bulging, I think of Randy Quaid, though. Bulging so. beastly man. Yes, bulging beastly man. Um. Mike, I mean... In a green leisure suit. Or it was blue, I think. <sighs> anyway, go ahead. You know, kind of tying this in before we uh, r- run out of time here. You mentioned... Yeah, man, your dogs are just lively tonight. Only at the Paranomaly Zone can you get discussion on the paranormal, strange, and mysterious, but also have interactions with two large dogs and a large train in the background. I tell yes. you, it's the only place you can find that. And multiple orbs. <laughs> Well, yeah. <laughs> well, that alone is, it would be fun to have video on. People can watch for orbs. There you go. There you go. Yeah. See how many you can count throughout the episode. So uh, just to tie it in here before we run out of time, what is what are your, if you had to rank Mike on a scale of one to ten the chance of the kraken actually existing <laughs> we're talking the kraken now here yes um that came from david jones locker yeah, yeah i mean do we need to describe what the kraken is i think it's i think people listening to the show probably are familiar probably with the, have a good idea with the legend of the kraken what do you think mike are the chances in the scale of one to ten of mm-hmm. that in particular being legit and Mike's grimacing. He's like, oh, God, he's putting well, him on the spot. I do that because I love putting him on the spot. Well, you know, there are things that are, well, what I have uh, a definition of the Kraken. I mean, this might be, well, it's they, they call it an aggressive cephalopod-like creature that's capable of destroying entire ships and dragging sailors to their doom. And that's part of the legend, obviously. The legend. Yes, of the it's massive- actually a Scandinavian folklore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we're, we're basically talking about a massive, I mean, there's a giant squid, there's a colossal squid, and I then there's... The there, exactly. Then there's this unbelievably, unthinkably massive squid known as the Kraken. I mean, we've said this how many times, Mike, on episodes, that legends usually have a basis of truth to them. Right. I like to think that. I'd like to think that they're... Ha- well, not that I'd like to think because it's terrifying. You feel sorry for them. You know that stuff like this has happened back in the day when early sea explorers, you know, trekking across this unknown, the vast ocean wilderness, basically. Right. How often did they reach a tragic end at the 
at the hands or the tentacles or what have you of monstrous sea creatures. Right. No, one, no one will ever know. No one will ever know. But tales right. survive, and they survive for a reason because, hey, maybe it did happen. Yes, very well put. Was it? Yes. Was it well put? But, um, yes. Mike's getting all, I don't know, now he's getting sassy now. I don't know what the hell's happening. A little sassy in my assy there a little bit. I'll I'll calm down for you. Gross. That was gross. (laughs) I just Uh, wanted to rhyme, man. Yeah, don't rhyme. It did not work. No, not with those words. I retracted. Sassy (laughs) in my assy. I don't like that. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Sounds like something you better take something for. <clears throat> oh, oh by the way uh everybody um keep keep the uh, cuddle ghost <laughs> hashtag going yes uh yes. Mike, mike and i sincerely are talking about uh, making a t-shirt of that we need to create a, a cool image and uh we'll, we'll 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 get that done and we'll have it available sometime down the road i mean we we promise that even if there's only if it's a very limited supply right it would be a very limited very supply. very limited supply but I, uh, supply i want one for myself because yeah, i will wear the hell out of it but we will not and i'm repeating <laughs> we will not have the hashtag sassy in my assy going viral <laughs> anytime soon so don't try to get that one going but if you want to that'd no. be hilarious <laughs> No, I don't think so. That's sassy with a Y. Um, and then yes. assy, I, would that be I-E for assy? <laughs> sassy. <laughs> Whatever you wish. <laughs> oh, my God, we're going off the rails. Here. I could, uh, you know, right here, I should have it on my scallion. Sassy in my ass, right on the <laughs> brim. <laughs> I can get that embroidered or something. <laughs> oh, man, that's going on Mike's, <clears throat> that's on Mike's tombstone right now. Yep, yep, yep. Are you going to get a tombstone, Mike? Are you going to? Do you have plans for that? I mean, it's a long way away. Are Are you going to be like cremated and scattered um, uh, in a special no. spot? I'm actually going to have a simple cross made out of two sticks pulled off of a pine tree. Oh, nice! With Stuck the together needles with the pulled scent. off and stripped, and have that nice aroma scent of pine. <laughs> and then it'll eventually rot away and nobody will know that I'm buried there until Ooh. maybe a thousand years later and somebody will excavate my body and I will be famous, not knowing who I am. But look at what we found. So is it better <laughs> Is it better to become famous after you're dead? You'll never know your fame. You'll never know your fame. You'll never reap the benefits of your fame or to never be famous at all. Which one is ah, it? That would suck. <laughs> uh, I'd just rather not be fam- famous at all. And I, uh, the way it is now, I would, it's I kind would of, not prefer to be famous. It's kind of a slap in the face. If, if you are seeking fame and then you only achieve fame in death, it's kind of a that, sad irony, you know? And it's, yeah, but that would be better for me, though. I, yeah. I, I don't want the attention of being famous. Yeah, especially. I would love to have attention from from what we do on the podcast because yeah, you know, oh, it's something course. we love to interact and stuff. But other than that, yeah, so, I'll take as much attention and fame from this as I can get, which hasn't started <laughs> no. started yet. <laughs> but but you know what I mean. And you know what? we're not giving up. We are not giving up. I don't care no. if we after ten years we're not giving up. If we dwindle, well, 10 years and then reborn going on three years ago now. Did you know, Mike, uh, right. actually last uh, month was our third year anniversary of the Paranomaly Zone. So Really? Yeah. We, Man, that's that's crazy. It's I, been I three years that. since we've talked with uh, Ron Moorhead for the last time. And uh, oh, yeah. shortly after that, we talked with Dustin. Can you believe it's been that long since we've talked with Dustin, for God's sakes? Um, Boy, you, we better get a hold of him again. Yeah. See so, what he's been up to. So... You know, I will a, a little, <clears throat> a little patting on the back here. It's not big by any means. I posted this on the Twitter the other day. Um, it's kind of cool that this little podcast of ours, Mike, especially reconsidering the utter reset we did three years ago, where the alternate L podcast was erased. Yeah, we suff- we suffered a little bit from that. No, we did absolutely, and that was my fault because I was I didn't have patience. I really wanted to slap that big forehead of yours. <laughs> Thank you. <I> know. <laughs> and so did I, man. Um, <laughs> no. I didn't no, put no. too much thought into it. I should have. I didn't give any <clears throat> of our alternate row podcasts a heads up at all. 
that we were going to be taking a different direction. I mean, kind of, well, you know, kind of changing the way that we uh, focused on our topics and stuff. We um, wanted to be more focused. Yeah. yeah, yeah. More, you know, instead more, of, more, more. instead of talking, literally having a conversation about anything for two and a half hours <laughs> um, with no focus. But apparently a lot of people liked it. Um, but in, again, considering we had that total reset, basically started from scratch again. Um, yeah, the idea that we're we're narrowing in, we're closing in very close on essentially a quarter million downloads with a few thousand views from YouTube thrown in. I think that's pretty darn cool. I mean, I, I think that's fantastic. You know, because again, Mike, our YouTube page totally reset. Sadly, when I redid everything, we lost all of our previous alternate podcast views which was closing mm -hmm. in on, again, no big deal. I get it. I'm not trying to make it sound like we're anything other than we are. But we're closing in on 40,000 views total for the Ultimate right. Podcast. All those got thrown out the window. They're not there anymore. <laughs> you know? So these new ones with the Paranomaly Zone and these downloads, it's pretty cool that we can say a quarter of a million is kind of cool, kind of neat for our, and, our little podcast here. And that's, that's in the last three years? Total. So, I mean, that's something to like kind of maybe go... Awesome. Pat yourself on the back a little bit. And I won't pat myself on the back, but I'll, no. I'll be happy about it. Yeah, I'm not patting myself on the back either. Yeah, I just saw you do it literally. Yeah, because I was saying, you, don't do that. Oh, you're demonstrating like <laughs> I wouldn't know what you meant. <laughs> dang it. No, but my point, my point that I was failing to get at is that by no means is that a huge number. We understand that. But for us, literally being nobodies, we can't thank everyone enough who have listened to our podcast. We can't thank them um, any right. more heartily than, yes, we, than, absolutely. We, than we already do. So The we, love yeah. flows from us to every one of you. Yeah, 100%. Every one of you. So, gosh, and, my dog and your too. dogs. Man, your dogs are talkative tonight, man. Are they, are they waiting for dad to get off the, the silly podcast? What the hell? Oof, Mike, know. final thoughts on monsters, myths, uh, legend. Well, not even myths, but um, we didn't even get to that. We kind of talked about the Kraken a little bit. Uh, other, like biblical sea monsters, the the Leviathan, oh. like you said, Mike. Yep. Um, uh, yeah, absolutely. Its counterpart, the Behemoth. I'm not sure if you're familiar yep. with those two. Absolutely. Yep. I mean, there's uh, so much stuff. Sea uh, sea serpents, mermaids. For God's sakes, I know we had a. Oh yeah. We had an episode focusing on. Mermaids, yeah. mermen, mer people. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Manatees uh, mistaken right. for beautiful women. How, <laughs> how lonely are sailors, man? Yeah, I get it. <laughs> Not I, that manatees are out in the middle of the ocean, but no. Know. But you know, I get it though, man. It it, <clears throat> yeah. it happens. It flipping happens. You know how long whaling vessels went out, Mike? They were gone for three years at times. They take oh, yeah. off. Boy, that 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 giant sunfish probably looked pretty darn good. <laughs> <laughs> never I don't care how lonely I got. That sheep's head thing is never going to uh, <laughs> garner my interest. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah. But sincerely, like, you know, uh, whaling vessels back in the you know 1800s, they take off from Nantucket to return mm -hmm. two or three years later, Mike. Exactly. I'm, yeah. I can't imagine. I People nowadays think they have it tough. They have a hard job. Yeah. They, uh, I mean, there's all the toils, the tribulations. No, no. <laughs> well, uh, you know, like even the, shit our, went like, down back in the day. Holy crap, are people tough? Exactly. Even like our ancestors that, that immigrated here, um, they'd get on a ship and uh, they it could be three or four weeks or it could be three or four months that they would be traveling. Yeah, exactly. Depending on, you know the currents and everything and the winds yeah. and all that stuff. And even if you made it, I mean, who knows if you're in, a, oh, exactly. you know, sure. you, could, you could die out there. How many yeah. unknown shipwrecks are out there? You know, just, absolutely. It's a cemetery. The ocean is a cemetery, mm -hmm. but gosh, man, monsters, Mike, does the ocean terrify you? Well, it doesn't terrify me, but, uh, I would have to say that I respect it greatly. That's a great way of putting it. And, uh, as far as sea monsters, it's proven that we have actual real creatures that are in the ocean, proven, found, documented, everything. 
that can be classified as monsters. I, I, I believe that. Yeah, they're monstrous at the least. Yes, and monstrous. you know, and and the the ones that are uh, legends or folklore, you could put them in a question mark category. Some of them that well, maybe, maybe something like this yeah. has popped up here and there. Well, the deep sea is like space almost, Mike. It's so much. Oh, absolutely. So much is unknown. What, like you said, what we have scientifically documented down there can be truly terrifying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Literally monstrous in appearance, even if they're tiny little like dragonfish or something. They're goblin right. fish, you know, these right. just bizarre creatures. Yeah, um, and the f and down in the deep, the the fish that have their own light source, even. Oh yeah, bioluminescent you know, creatures. Bio absolutely. Yeah. I talk about a f unbelievably mind blowing aspect of evolution again. Being able to produce your own light for God's mm -hmm. sake, that's a miracle. It's right. <laughs> I can produce my own light. Can you? Yes, but I need to be in a certain position with a match, and and. Uh, <clears throat> That's oh my I'm lord that. and on that one we are wrapping up the show <laughs> mike uh we do not recommend what mike was suggesting no, because and i have never done that so <laughs> oh sure sure i haven't i swear to god i haven't unfortunately i've seen people do it and um, yeah no thank you but uh, <laughs> on that note thanks everybody for hanging with us tonight it's been a blast as always mike yes. it's always good seeing you another great discussion another Absolutely. good time until next time mike what do our awesome friends of the Paranomaly Zone podcast need to do? Peace out.